Hello, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. I'm going to do a video today talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. And I have a lot to cover today. Several news stories, some very interesting news story, stories, and kind of some strange ones. So <clears throat> let's get right into it. Uh, <clears throat> the first headline is very interesting to me because uh, when you click on it, the, the article has been removed from the internet, and it was from a, <clears throat> a very uh, legitimate news source, Haaretz, out of Israel. And the headline reads, <clears throat> Putin meets Egypt's al-Sisi as Russia builds a role in Middle East. The reason I think that's very interesting is that this meeting happened on uh, Tuesday of this past week. Vladimir Putin met with Egypt's uh, leader, al-Sisi. Again, discussing their role, building, as Russia's building their role in the Middle East. And now that article has been removed from the Internet as a Russian plane just got possibly shot down right over Egypt today. Killing 220 or so people. I just find that very interesting. We are, <laughs> you don't know what to believe. Who knows if we'll ever get the real story. Did the plane just fall out of the sky? Possibly. But hearing uh, experts talk today, it's very rare that a plane at that altitude would just all of a sudden fall out of the sky. <clears throat> but who knows? Will we ever get the real truth? I don't know. But we are on the brink of World War III. And we are on the brink of a new world order. And uh, there will be ser several false flag type attacks to blame. So that, for example, Russia could be blamed for something. Or ISIS can be blamed for something. We need to keep our eyes open. Because we live in very perilous times. Now, <clears throat> here's another headline. ISIS claims downing Russian airliner, no survivors. Now, again, I don't know how much you can trust ISIS for anything they have to say, uh, but they're claiming responsibility. It says a Russian airliner crashed over Egypt's Sinai Peninsula Saturday evening, killing all 224 passengers. The Airbus A321 of the Russian company Metrojet had left the popular tourism resort and was heading towards St. Petersburg when it went down for as yet known reasons. However, a local jihadi ISIS affiliate called Sinai Province has claimed responsibility for the crash, announcing on the social media that it had shot down the plane. Uh, and I have heard news reports that this plane did go down in an area where there is current fighting with ISIS. So, who knows? But as I said, look out because this world is heading straight into World War Three. And all the, it's just, it's just crazy. All right. Um, speaking of an ISIS group, here's another headline. ISIS group fires at Israel but hits Gaza. But uh, major headline there, ISIS firing, trying to fire at Israel. Uh, here's another headline. <clears throat> Kerry can't rule out deploying even more commandos in Syria. Well, I'm sure that the 50 or so that we're sending over there right now isn't really going to do anything, and they're supposedly not going to be involved in combat, so apparently it seems that Barack Obama's sending them over there to be sitting ducks, is what it seems like. Uh, but John Kerry says he can't rule out displaying or deploying even more commandos to the area. We know for sure Isaiah 17.1 tells us that Damascus will be a ruinous heap. It will no longer be a city. Uh, it is, even though it's suffered great uh, destruction over the last three or four or five years, it is still the functioning capital of Syria, but it looks like that uh, may not be long if that prophecy comes to pass. But at this point, it just again seems to be that Obama keeps trying to do as little as possible to make it look like he's trying to do something. Uh, here's another interesting headline. 
Trump, Donald Trump, in a speech says, Obama hates Israel. And he pledges to keep Israel safe if he's president. Well, one, I certainly agree with Donald Trump that Barack Hussein Obama hates Israel. That's what he's, he's kind of done everything he can to prove that over the last seven years. Uh, <clears throat> keeping Israel safe, that's going to be up to God. Israel will soon be, I feel, in the time of Jacob's trouble. They will flee to Petra, and God will protect them, but they're going to face a terrible time going forward. Daniel's 70th week, we're right there on the brink. And, you know, just as I saw that news report today about the, the plane crash, it also made me think about all the people on that plane, and I just pray that for those families, and, and uh, you know, I just want to say that if you do not know for sure that you are saved, Today is the day of salvation. You are not guaranteed another breath. Those poor people got on that plane. And 20 minutes after takeoff, they were in eternity. You could pass away at any moment. You do not want to die in your sin. We'll get into that more at the end of this video. Uh, <clears throat> I, I'm going to go ahead and read this news story in a little more detail. Uh, another sign of the times... The hatred for the Jewish people. Uh, again, it's amazing how the world remains silent when things like this are said. Uh, <clears throat> Egyptian TV host and historian agree burning Jews is the solution. This is out of the Eretz Sheva today. It says, An, an Egyptian televo television host and noted historian agreed that burning Jews is the only solution for the Jewish people on Tuesday in an interview. Uh, since the Crusaders killed the Jews as well, Islamic history professor uh, said, they, they rounded them up in a house of worship and burned it down. Sidon then noted that survivors were sold as slaves, with every 30 Jew, uh, Jews sold for a dinar. This is a trivial price, but obviously that was what they were worth, host Dr. Muhammad Khalid agreed. Khalid then noted that the history of the Jews has been black since the dawn of time and asked whether burning, which the Persians, the Crusaders, and the Nazis used to commit genocide, is the only solution for the Jews. So it seems, Zayden affirmed, adding that negotiations and coexistence are impossible. But where is the United Nations, where is Pope Francis when things like that are said? Where are these people that keep saying, trying to promote peace? Why don't they speak up when things like that are said against the Jewish people? Very, very sad. And again, a very big indication of the signs of the times that we're living in. And speaking of peace and the Palestinians, Abbas, Mahmoud Abbas says, I don't seek uh, right a full return. And I won't cancel the Oslo Accords. This is also out of the Times of Israel yesterday. <clears throat> Abbas says, I am not asking for a right of return for 6 million Palestinians. I want a solution for them. The PA president tells Dutch Jews he doesn't want to boycott Israel. Only settler products. Claims Israel holding direct talks with Hamas. <clears throat> Mahmoud Abbas assured Dutch Jews that he neither intends to abandon the Oslo Accords nor insist on the absorption of millions of Palestinians into Israel. We never said we were going to cancel the Oslo Accords, Abbas said uh, Friday during a meeting. Uh, <clears throat> we are not going to cancel, we will not cancel anything. Uh, <clears throat> but on September, 30, yeah, on September 30th at the UN headquarters, Abbas said, We cannot continue to be bound by these signed agreements with Israel because the status quo cannot continue. So he basically did say at the United Nations, September 30th, that he was going to end the Oslo Accords. And he says because the status quo cannot continue. That's what he said in his speech. And then you go down here and he says, Abbas said Israel has, in his, in his speech on uh, Tuesday, he, Abbas said that Israel has been violating the status quo on the Temple Mount since 2000. So which is it? Is Israel violating the status quo? Or 
as he said in the speech on September 30th, the status quo cannot continue. Very, very confusing. But the Oslo Accords, uh, very interesting because it's a covenant. And keep in mind that the Antichrist will confirm a covenant, make strong a covenant that already exists with many for one week. There will be a covenant confirmed that will allow Israel to rebuild a temple, that will allow them to uh, resume animal sacrifice. Uh, it will supposedly guarantee their peace and security. And the world is calling for that. And I, and I, I don't know if it's going to be the Oslo Accord. I don't know if it's, it's going to be... Uh, this climate change thing in Paris, who knows, but certainly the world is moving closer and closer to the time where the Antichrist will confirm this covenant <clears throat> with many. All right, let's get into some odd, strange but odd, Pope Francis stories. <clears throat> Pope Francis drops second single off new album. Wow. Wow. Uh, Pope Francis has got a new album coming out in November, November 22nd. <clears throat> He's already released one C, uh, single. Now he releases a second one. It says, it's out of time. It says, take a holy listen to the Holy See. Wow. Again, I would maintain there is no Holy See. It's more like the Dead Sea. It's a spiritually dead, satanically inspired bureaucracy. That's leading the world straight to the one world government and the one world religion. But says Pope Francis is bringing down the temple for his second single called Porque Suffering Los Niños. Is the second track released from the album Wake Up. Fe feature people you do people if you're not awake, you do need to wake up. That's a, that's a very prophetic statement right there by Pope Francis. Um featuring the pontiffs prayers set to music the great question for everyone is why do the children suffer why do the children suffer francis can be heard saying in spanish over melodies from stringed instruments which intensify his speech as his speech picks up momentum which children is he talking about the children that have suffered due to abuse by catholic priests no i don't think so um <clears throat> It says, the new song's orchestration is altogether more dramatic than the pop rock style of the album's first single, Wake Up, Go, Go Forward. Wow. Uh, it says, the more forlorn music fits the subject matter in which Francis recounts the suffering of children who have grown up abandoned or hungry or learned suffering at a young age. Wow, all I can say is I bet the demons are dancing to this one. Um... Speaking of another strange manifestation, possibly, uh, toddler, toddler dressed up as Pope wins the best costume prize at Obama's White House party. It's Halloween party. This is out of the Daily Mail. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to read that article, but I am putting the links to all these articles in the description box for you. You can check them out, and they have pictures, and a lot of them have pictures and videos attached. But uh, I do have to comment on that one. Uh, <clears throat> Obama picks the boy, a toddler dressed as a pope as the best costume at the party. Well, all I can say is Obama, the Pope, and Halloween. Let's just say it's a match that was definitely not made in heaven. Hmm. Let's go to Scripture. Let's go to Revelation, chapter nine. Maybe give it a, get an indication of where that match was made. <clears throat> Obama, the Pope, and Halloween. Revelation chapter nine, verse one through three. And the fifth angel sounded, and a star fell from heaven unto the earth, and unto him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there rose a smoke out of the pit. As the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Verse uh, 11, Revelation 
9, 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. That, I believe, sums up where this match between Obama and Francis and Halloween came from. Uh, <clears throat> here's an interesting article. This is an op-ed. Um, Israel must make no consequences. Excuse me, let me restart that. Israel must make no concessions on the Temple Mount. Uh, I saw the Ynet News today. The guy makes some very interesting points. It says, if Israel gives up Jews' rights to visit holy site in an effort to prevent further terrorist attacks, the next battle will be against Jews' rights to visit or pray at all Jewish holy sites, such as the Western Wall. Well, of course, we already saw last week that the that the Palestinians tried to get the United Nations to give them the Western Wall. Um, <clears throat> Israel must reject any attempt by the Muslim Arabs in Israel, the Palestinian Authority, and Jordan, as well as President Barack Obama, Secretary of State John Kerry, France, the European Union, and the United Nations to diminish the Jewish people's historic rights to the Temple Mount, including Israel's sole sovereignty over the site, as well as the right of any Jew to visit and worship on, worship on it. It says, I am not an observant Jew or a settler or any so-called provocateur, but merely a Jew who still believes in the historical truth that the Temple Mount is still the holiest site for the Jews, as it has been for the last 3,000 years, and as the place where the two Jewish holy temples, temples stood. Uh... For me or any other Jew visiting the Temple Mount is not about harming the, sanct the sanctity of the mosque or trying to deny the Muslims' right to pray and worship in the mosque or attempting to humiliate or provoke the Muslims. It is to claim my own right, as in any democratic country, to exercise my freedom of travel, travel and religion throughout the land of my ancestors and my past. Very good, very good, very good. Will the rule listen? Maybe eventually, but who knows when. Um, but let's try, go back up here. He says, Israel must reject any attempt by the Muslims, Arabs, and Israel. That's one. The Palestinian Authority, that's two. And Jordan, that's three. As well as U.S. President Barack Obama, four. Secretary of State John Kerry, five. France, six. The European Union, seven. And the United Nations. To diminish the Jewish people's historical rights to the Temple Mount. As you can see... Pretty much the entire world is against Israel in this situation. Calling for a two-state solution, calling for a resolution at the United Nations, calling for Israel to give up their God-given land, maintain the status quo, rewarding the terrorists for complaining and killing people, rioting, stabbing people, when all the Jews want to do is go up there and pray. Let's go to Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem excuse me, a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. I never thought I'd see the day where the United States would turn against Israel. But, again, it makes it clear in the Bible that the whole world will turn against Israel on the very last days. And now Israel, Israel has a, or Canada has a new uh, leader, prime minister, that's also anti-Israel, replacing a very good friend to Israel, who was the pre previous leader, Harper, in Canada. Um, and then what this guy says is exactly right, as, as, as I pointed out. If you start trying to give up any rights to the Temple Mount, they will want more, and they will want more, and they will want more. Just like they've already gone, after whining and complaining all the time that they can't change the status quo, the Palestinians, then they what do they want to do? They want to change the status quo. They want to go to the United Nations and have the Wailing Wall given to them. I don't know if any of you have kids, and if you've read, read this book, but there's a children's book called If You Give a Moose a Cookie. 
And that's pretty much exactly what this whole article is about. So that book, if you give him give a mouse a cookie, I think I said a moose, if you give a mouse a cookie, he's going to want a drink, he's going to want this, he's going to want that, and, and it keeps progressing. That's exactly what's going to happen on the Temple Mount if we continue to give, the, give in to the Palestinians. When is somebody going to step in? That somebody will be the Antichrist, and when is he going to step in? And seem to set things straight. I say that because he will not truly set things straight. He will lead this world to almost complete annihilation. Jesus himself said, Matthew 21, excuse me, Matthew 24, verse 21 and 22, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning, and no nor ever shall be. And except those days were shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Um, <clears throat> speaking of the Temple Mount, Netanyahu I will not let the Temple Mount ignite. But there, the, the Temple Mount is certainly a flashpoint. There is a Psalm 83 war coming. There is the Ezekiel 38 war of Gog and Magog with Russia, Turkey, and uh, Iran, Persia in the Bible, and other Muslim nations coming against Israel in the last days. Here's a headline, very interesting. You know, I, I keep telling you that the Vatican and the United Nations have the same agenda. Pope Francis, with this climate change uh, encyclical, coming to the United Nations to promote it, he's kind of their mouthpiece. The one world government, the new world order, income inequality, wealth redistribution, all that stuff. They have the same agenda. I don't know how much more proof you need. But here's more proof. Here's a, here's a headline. Four, four, let's see, four, four UN staffers sacked for sharing child porn. The United Nations, four of their staffers were fired for sharing child porn. As I said, they have a lot in common with the same agenda as many in the Vatican. And somehow, the world seems to think that the United Nations Sustainable Development Agenda, their Climate Change Agenda, their global, their new Millennial Goals, promoted by the UN and Pope Francis, that they somehow will have the answer to the world's problems. And they keep talking about how that Pope Francis is a great moral voice and a moral authority. Really? No, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And so if something doesn't line up with Scripture, or with what Jesus said, it's not the truth. UN finds new era of global ambition on climate change. If I hear that phrase global one more time, my goodness, um... The United Nations finds a new era of global ambition on climate change. Uh, report says ruled partners are on track to help environment without harming the economy. Again, isn't that sound exactly like Pope Francis? It says the ruled is on track to make a significant dent in cutting greenhouse gas emissions without sacrificing economic growth. <clears throat> the report assesses the overall effect of plans covering 146 countries, including Canada, in the run-up to the Global Summit in Paris next month. And, finds, and it finds cause for optimism in the unprecedented collective effort to cut greenhouse gas emissions. These national climate change action plans represent a clear and determined down payment on a new era of climate ambition from the global from the global community of nations. Governments from all corners of the earth have signaled through their plans that they are determined to play their part to their national uh, circumstances and capabilities. Again, more and more call for the international, the global community to come together and agree on this stuff. And it will usher in the one world government, one world religion, and, find, and also the one world monetary system known as the mark of the beast one more news story for today 
Uh, and um, it's a sign of the times kind of article. Just kind of showing you where this world is at this point in time. Um, Two thirds. Headline read. This is out of the UN News Center, by the way. Headline reads: <laughs> Two thirds of the world's population is infected with herpes, says the new UN uh, Health Agency report. I'm not going to read the article. It kind of pretty much says itself. Well, yeah, I'll read the first paragraph. More than 3.7 billion people under the age of 50 are infected with herpes simplex virus type 1, which in most cases causes cold sores around the mouth, according to the first global estimates of the infection by the World Health Organization. And it goes on and talks about that. Well, when I was, as I read that headline, it brought some scripture to mind. Um, you know, this, this sin-filled... God rejecting world has no idea how much worse it is about to get. There's going to be pestilences, there's going to be oh, famine, there's going to be death. All Most of the world's population will die during the final seven year period of time. And speaking of sores breaking out on people, uh, let's turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. And I heard a great voice out of, out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. There is a mark coming that will be enforced by the false prophet and the Antichrist, the whole world will have to accept the mark to buy or sell. Praise God if you are a born again, washed in the blood, uh, follower of Jesus Christ. You will not be here during that time period. I know a lot of people want to tell you that that's not true. But I will stand on those promises all day long. Revelation chapter 3 verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world. To try them to dwell upon the earth. If you do not know you are saved, today is the day of salvation. Things are moving really, really fast, and you don't want to die in your sin. If you do, you will spend eternity in hell. That's all there is to it. That is the truth. Jesus Christ is the only way. There are no multiple paths to God like the world likes to tell you. All religions aren't the same. You cannot make your own version of God. There is a gospel. It's very simple. Jesus came and died for you 2,000 years ago. He shed his blood on the cross, died at Calvary, rose again from the dead. And if you are willing to turn from your sin and believe that and turn to Jesus Christ in faith, he will save you. That's why he died. Nothing else can save you. John chapter uh, 3, we all know three. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent his Son into the world, excuse me, for God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says that uh, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. As I said, Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. The Bible makes it clear that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you have not done so, I pray you will. Call upon him now, he will save you. He will give you joy and peace and eternal life. Let's close in prayer. Father, again, I just thank you for this opportunity to share your word. 
to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, to proclaim that He is the way, the truth, and the life, to reach out to this lost and dying world while we still can, and, and to tell them that Jesus is returning soon, to spread that message. And let's pray, Lord, that you will use this message to encourage anyone with who's doubting, who's struggling with their faith. And I pray that you would use this to encourage people to wake the sleeping, and most of all, to save the lost. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.